All right, Ryan, what are we doing today? We're training our 100 chickens. We got, have two kill cones and then a turkey fryer for the scalding process. You want the temperature to be 145 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the plucker, we just got a plucker off Amazon or Tractor Supply. It's a yard bird plucker. Works pretty well. You can really only do one at a time, maybe two if they're small. But for ours, we're only doing one at a time. A couple that you have to pull off by hand, but in general, we did the hard work. And then we have the butcher table and then the ice bath. So we've been just putting them in buckets with cold water. And then after they've been in the buckets of cold water, we'll move them into coolers with ice. Hey guys, it's a few days since we've processed our chickens. Uh, butchering day was really busy, so we didn't get a chance to film too much. So we figured we'd sit down and kind of tell you guys what we liked and what we'll do differently next time around and also our grand total weights and all that. So our total chickens that we butchered were 94 chickens. Um, total weight was 641 pounds and that gives you an average poundage of about 6.8 pounds. So they were pretty large birds compared to the ones we've heard other people raising. We did hold them for I think an additional week so they were about nine weeks old which is a week longer than some people hold them. Um, so that definitely added some weight. We also didn't let them get low on feed at all. We kept feed in front of them the whole time. We used organic feed, uh, which may have contributed to their weight too. I'm not sure. Yeah. And our largest bird was 8.99 pounds. I wish I could say we had a nine pound bird, but it was right there on the cusp. Just if we average, round it up, it's nine pounds, but 8.99 was the largest bird. And we had several eight pounders. There were quite a few really, really big ones. As far as like butchering day went, for that many birds, 94 in one day, it definitely would not have been possible without all of our great help. We had lots of family and friends come in to help us. We're super grateful for that. We started at about 7 a.m. with setup and everything, and then it was 10 o'clock at night when the last bird was in the fridge or the freezer at that point. So the process of chilling our birds, um, right after they were butchered, we put them in cold water. Soon after that, transferred them into coolers with ice. Left them there for four hours till their temperature got to about 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. I think we got close to that. From what I researched, you really want to wait until that body core temperature is down to at least 40 degrees before cutting them up and parting them out because that will give you the most tender meat possible. It has something to do with the rigor mortis of the meat and the muscle uh, contractions. You can research that yourself more. I won't go into detail about that, but that's just what we decided to do personally. If you do it differently, that's fine for you, but we definitely wanted to try to get the most tender meat that we could. And I have uh, to say that when we first ate the chicken, the first chicken we ate, it was it was like butter. It was yeah. like the what did I say, the filet mignon of, of chicken. The filet mignon of so, chicken, yeah. yeah. And we typically buy organic pasture raised chicken yeah. normally, but seriously tasted like a marshmallow or something. Like it was really yummy chicken. So after their temperature dropped to 40 degrees, and we had an electric um, meat thermometer, so we were testing the internal temperature of the bird, not just the external temp. So after they were in the ice, we did cut up some of the bird. We had 66 of the birds whole, and we cut up the remaining 28 into parts so that it's easier to cook and defrost later. And we transferred about a third of them into our freezer immediately. And then the other third uh, we left in, in coolers or put some in our, in our fridge just to not overload our freezer. And here's our freezer. This has most of the birds in it, outside the ones we gave away are eight. It definitely holds all the birds and we could really actually fit some more. So yeah. for round two, maybe. Yeah. We know exactly what these chickens were fed and how they were treated. We pampered them uh, quite a lot. We moved them onto fresh grass every day. They always had clean water and food. And it just uh, feels good knowing we know exactly where our meat came from. So the big question is, will we do this again? I think we definitely would. Absolutely. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun, yeah. the butchering process, honestly. Uh, I enjoyed that. That's one thing we wanted to raise our kids around is knowing where food comes from. So here's some things that we would do differently. And here's some things that we'll definitely utilize again. One thing we're really glad we went ahead and invested in for this butchering process was a plucker. We looked into renting one out, but we just thought it made sense financially just to go ahead and buy it. 
So we purchased the Yardbird Plucker. I'll leave links in the description to all the products that we used for the butchering process. If you're interested in that and kind of our list of things that we bought and needed. You could have plucked all these birds by hand, but it definitely made the process go a lot faster using that mechanical plucker. It did take a little bit of work to figure out exactly how long it needed to be in there and the scalding temperature for some of the skin not to come off because occasionally the skin would rip off the bird a little bit. So if you're going to sell a bird at market, you may want to fine tune that a little bit yourself. But since these birds were just for us personally, we didn't really mind if they didn't look cosmetically the best. <laughs> So one of the pros in this whole process was just the type of bird we had. We did the jumbo Cornish cross birds and you know, they grew very fast like we've read and they taste delicious. So we'll definitely be doing that again. Not that we've tried any other breeds, but True. we were happy with these. Yeah. So another pro that we liked was that electric netting fencing that we had from Premier One. Uh, one it's kind of a pro and a con segueing into the cons a little bit. We like that we were able to move it around and give them fresh grass. However, our soil is a little bit rocky here and we bought the fence with the single spike on the bottom. They do sell a fence with like a foot peg off to the side where you can use your foot to help push it into the ground. I wish we had gotten that one because occasionally we'd have to use like a rubber mallet to help get those stakes into the ground, which is just an extra step. Um, it's a minor con, but that's something that was kind of annoying when we moved the fence around sometimes. So another con was just um, a piece of our chicken butchering. For our kill cones, we had two kill cones and I made those out of five gallon buckets, uh, which worked very well. That's not the part of the con, but the con is just the number of kill cones we had. For doing this many birds, we had plenty of help. Three or probably four kill cones would have been ideal um, just because it, it takes some time, you know, to do each bird. Um, and, and that ended up holding up the process because we had plenty of people actually butchering Initially, I was thinking the butchering table would be the, the hold up, but it was definitely the kill cones. Our uh, last main con is the vacuum sealer. We already owned the vacuum sealer, so we figured we would just use that versus buying uh, the shrink bags, which I've seen other people do. And we also borrowed one from some family. So we had two vacuum sealers running and that just kind of ate up a lot of time. Now, time will tell if that really helps limit freezer burn. Uh, we'll see how this year goes and all those birds. All the birds were in the ice by about three o'clock roughly, and from three o'clock to 10 o'clock was cutting up birds and vacuum sealing. So that really did eat up a lot of time. Next time we do it, I think we might try the shrink bags. And I haven't seen some other people talk about commercial vacuum sealers. Which so that could better. maybe be an option. I yeah. mean, commercial anything is probably better yeah. for 100 birds. But uh, yeah, maybe that's an option for us in the future. Yeah. Time will tell if that number of birds is enough for our family and whether or not we'll go through that many in a year or if we need to do it again in six months. We'll see. So stay tuned for that. So I'm a numbers person. I like seeing everything we spent um, to raise 100 birds. So I'm going to be putting a spreadsheet together of everything we spent and our upfront costs as well. So if you guys are interested in seeing those numbers, then leave a comment down below and we'll create a video about it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss that video when it comes out. If it comes out. <laughs> if it comes out. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope y'all have a great day. That's cute. What? Uh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm not tracking. Love you. Love you too. Did we I did. massage them? <laughs>